Witness the ass caught. It sounds like a nickname you might receive in prison, but don't worry, it's much less fun than that. Exciting, the most American sport on two wheels. The inspiration for an incredible new motorcycle, the Honda Ascot. We are all deeply impressed that Honda once raced at Ascot Park, but they never raced this. So, what are we looking at? Big forehead, pushed high so this plastic panel can hide the horn? That's like saying, uh oh, this birthmark is a tad unsightly. There, that's better. The chunky handlebar clamp contains my fuse box, which I need to get into once every decade, so thank Zeus that's accessible. Less so is the freaking key. And Honda recessed it so far, I need needle nose pliers to turn the damn thing. Whew, well, thank God I only do that 10 times a day. Of course, it's all worth it when you hear the lion roar. Is it? Yes, it is running. I think it's shy. Also suspicious. See, every time I turn right, the power level jumps over 9,000. What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right. Yeah, no, it's definitely not right. Also, the mirrors are inexplicably magnified, providing a nice shaky close-up of the second floor window of that apartment building making every Ascot owner an actual sex offender. And just in case this motorcycle still made sense to you, the kickstand is near enough mounted to the front wheel. Oh, for fuck's sake. I admit to liking the engine. The 500cc V-twin, that's funky. It's like a little baby Harley. However, Harleys have torque. You see, V-twins allow for longer cylinders and then a parallel. Long cylinder, long rod, long lever, and give cruisers a lever long enough and they shall move the world. Or at the very least, dislocate their arms and scare pillions. But the Ascot cylinders are not long. In fact, Honda made them wider bore than stroke. In technical terms, we say over square, or chody. So it's a V-twin, but not a cruiser. More like a rev-happy sport bike? Yee-hee-hee-hee! <laughs> Maybe! <laughs> Joe Biden, this thing is slow. Yeah, it might rev to 10,000, but it feels like it's second guessing every step from 5K up. Ah, that explains it. A shaft drive on a small sport bike. See, chain sprockets slice through the air. And even at 10,000 RPM, the windage loss is like 4%. Well, that'll do, says every sport bike ever. But no, let's spend a fortune on 90 degree bevel gears that wind in two axes, both of which are bathed in oil. So shaft drag is like molasses in January. 
especially past 4,000 RPM, we're talking 20, 25% windage loss. On a 1.5 liter touring bike that spends hours down here with power to spare, that's fine. But on a small capacity sport bike? What a waste. I wondered if it could still be a cornering scalpel, but then... Oh, shit, I almost lost the front. <laughs> See, when I downshift into a corner, the pinion gear starts to push back against the ring gear. But my wheel can't suddenly decelerate. It's carrying momentum. So well, what option is left? The pinion pushes the whole swing arm up. This is called shaft jacking. And if you've never experienced the jacking of your shaft, perhaps one day you'll meet the right girl and all that'll change. The point is, it unweights your front tire precisely when we need front grip. Now, I never try to crash on purpose, which is why Fort 9 mounts an Insta360 X3. Like that. The camera can record on loop, so if I happen to ride an Ascot for a month and it happens to murder me one day, I will happen to have it on video. If you're suspicious of other vehicles, check the app. AI tracking makes it trivial to keep an offending car in shot. And while you upload your footage for trial by internet, you can send your X3 back to Insta360. Their care program will fix or replace crash damage for the first year. So we can capture this mutant on video, but how do we capture it in words? It's a V-twin that isn't a cruiser, a cumbersome shaft drive, so not a sport bike. Maybe the lack of chain maintenance makes it a tourer. One more night in my head I'm stirring up dust, kicking cobwebs Looking for a light I've never known Will it be out in the wilderness or will it be homegrown? Ow! <laughs> In my ranking of places to sit, this slots in just below the colonoscopy table. And the seat is as tall as the tank, equally hard and canted forward. It's like being forced to hump a park bench. But then the pegs are child height. Not even the CIA gets away with constraining people's limbs like this anymore. My only respite is to let my forearms take all the weight. So one must be a six foot five with a 22 inch inseam and massive forearms to find the ascot rideable. It's like Honda sent away for pictures of the typical American and got this. In conclusion, it's a cruiser's V-twin with the sport bike's bore and a tour's final drive, only you can't sit on this for consecutive hours, especially because... What the hell is that? Half my fuel capacity is stolen to snorkel air between the cylinders of the twin thing. Only the air duct is massive, so it can breathe 9,000 times a minute, a sport bike thing, only that won't let us tour. And it's particularly frustrating because the Ascot is so carefully made. The toolkit is keyed. The side panels bulge. If Honda built the worst motorcycle of the 1980s, it can only be because they meant, carefully, to build something that was bad at everything. Can it? Remember 1969. Honda releases their CB750, the definitive universal Japanese motorcycle. It's kinda comfy, kinda sporty, kinda long-legged, and kinda bad at everything, but they sell 500,000 UJMs over the next nine years. But appetites fill, and in 1980, a sales decline splits the company in two. And forward thinkers design the next generation 750, now available in cruiser, sport bike, and tourer trim. While a conservative faction holds faith with the universal Japanese motorcycle that made Honda rich. And they designed do-it-all dinosaurs right up until 1984, the Ascot catastrophe. 
$2,298 in spring, $1,400 by fall, and discontinued by winter. Honda famously confronts the old engineers and says, your motorcycle is bad at everything, to which they reply, yes, that's what it's meant to be. The Honda Ascot, what motorcycling was meant to be. Thank you very much for watching and thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. If you happen to want a camera, click the link below.